Okay. So 7% is about what the UC Berkeley range should be. It's about 5 to 10% failure rates. We want zero. All of us want it zero, but 5 to 10% is acceptable. 7%. How about 3S? Almost 40% of the 3S students. These are introductory folks we're supposed to get excited about computing. 40% almost are failing this course. And I blame time management. Because a lot of these folks are freshmen or sophomores who get, you know, who are balancing a pass, not pass course or a graded or a two unit course with another four unit calculus course and not putting the time into it. So that's what I blame. Then I said, let me, re let, me re let me actually do a little scared straight. Let me show that data, which I did exactly a semester ago, January 2009. I said, look, folks, the folks who took the last semester, 40% failed. Let me scare you straight. In the 70s, had this show called Scared Straight. They take these kids and take them to the jails, and they say, don't be like me. Okay? So I did that to all the folks in your chair a semester ago. I said, that's got to work. And we have to have better numbers, right? Remember the numbers were 7 and 38? Nine. Well, okay, more students in 3L fail, but hopefully I affected the 3S kids, right? Small than 38, right? Right? No. The same number. <laughs> I had like 110 students the first semester and 210 students the next semester, but it's exactly 38 percent. I can't believe it. They learn nothing percentage-wise. I mean, they learn nothing about being scared and starting early and all that stuff. Oh, so. Because of that, we, we, we revisited, we, we revamped the pacing points formula because people thought it was too complicated. We had this big spreadsheet. We said, let's start over again. This turtle, discrete units of numbers, not about what, exactly what date you got it in. It's easy. Every Friday, it's computed, by the way. The turtle finishes their work on the last hour of every Friday. So we, we, over that weekend, over every week, we look at them, and that's how, that's how we compare you with the turtle, just to give you some detail. So how about the other self-paced guys? How'd they do? Well, this is a year ago. This is 2008 fall. Remember exactly, you know, one year ago today, folks. And, you know, I didn't, nobody broke 50%, but folks, I had a lot of failures. <laughs> and by the way, this is the same grading curve and often the same finals we've given before. So this is not nothing new, but people are now failing at rates that I don't think is unacceptable. Another reason we revamped the self-paced pacing formula. So look at that, it's crazy. Some of the courses have 50% failure rates. So again, scared straight. I said, you gotta start, folks, you gotta start, you gotta start, you gotta start early. And how'd they do last semester? 47B, yay, you got down 10%. Um, except 9A was 70% of failure. In fact, we had one semester, and I was, there, I was the director at this point, and I looked at, I had six 9E students, I looked at them, and they, you know, basically it's the, it's the same kind of material we've had for 10 years. I said, all right, how'd they do? And six for six were below the line. I had six students, six students failed. 100% failure rate of 90. Yeah, they all came in at the end. One guy didn't want to buy the book. And would only read I mean, they it. all had excuses of like, yeah. I didn't do it, blah, blah, blah. They didn't even know each other. Six independent people right. on campus could not do this course. Uh, and we've, got, we've improved the course. We actually reduced material. We had a new book. We revamped it. Later. Now 90 is one of the lower numbers. Yay, but still 30%. I don't want to have anything. I want no, no red. All green. OK. So. Get started. I hope the pacing point form is enough to get you guys started. No one has ever failed Just put the time in. Everybody who fails says, Dan, the reason I failed is I had no time. I, I put it to the end. I didn't actually think about it. So let me now summary, summarize. Course material, our website has everything. Everything is online. You, don't, you need to ride by no reader. You have this rules handout. That's all you basically need. The website, and that has everything. Program assignments, online. Quizzes, all, sample quizzes, online. Come in, take actual quizzes. Um, readings there. There's a workbook you have to buy. You have to bring. When you go to the medical doctor, you have to have a chart, right? And the chart is what has continuity of care. If another doctor's on call, they look at your chart, they find out what's happening. The same thing here. We had all these tutors, 16 tutors. All these tutors are going to be rotating around and not remembering who you are, 400, 300 students or so. You need to bring a notebook. Carol suggests the blue book. For $1.50 or $2, you can buy the blue book. It's all you need. Put it in your book. Put it in your, if you buy, purchase the actual textbook. Just put it there. You have to walk in with your blue book or your notebook to be served. If you do not walk in the notebook, we cannot help you. We'll say, go out, go away and come back with your notebook. We just say, sorry. So buy textbooks if you want to. Many of them are online. And guide to materials handout, which is all the things you need here. Um, computers, we give you an account form if you want to use our Unix things. Most of you have laptops or computers at home or in the library. But we have accounts if you need that. The uh, CSUA, the Undergraduate Association, offers Unix and Emacs help sessions if you need that. 
Um, most of the software is free. I don't think any piece of software you have to buy, including the MATLAB, usually you have to buy that. You can use it on our Unix system for free. So you need to buy no software. Almost everything is free. Actually, everything is free. Forget the almost. Our website has everything I said. This is inst slash self pace. Again, that's in your handout. You don't need anything in here. We asked the students who succeeded. We asked the students who failed. What was it that you did that, that worked for those who succeeded? What is, it, what is it that you didn't do for those who failed? And this is we summarized into four bullet points. Number one, you have to make time every week for the self-paced program. If you're in this course, you're taking one of our courses, you cannot just delay this thing and say, well, I'll find time when I'm, no, no. It'll always, your spare activities, rotating your sock drawer will always take precedence over things that you don't put priorities on. So prioritize this stuff and make it actually work. Find other students who are in the same class. I have no problem with you guys studying together. You certainly have to do your programming assignments together. We'll make sure you know, when we ask you one on one that you know your stuff. So you can't try to fob off somebody else's work as your own. But study together. Why not do some reading together and then compare the readings and talk about it, go to the cafe, enjoy yourself. Work with other people. How about people who actually turn their clocks back, their wristwatches back 10 minutes? You may do that, right? I know some people do that. I used to do that. All right, forward 10 minutes. You're adjusted, so you're always forward, right? You know what I mean? Yes. I'm late, 10 minutes all over, everywhere. That's weird. Um, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, what's my point? My point is, what if you told your brain that it actually was summer session and you had eight weeks to finish this course? Well, you'd come in twice as often, right? Well, do that. If you do that, you're going to sprint ahead of the tortoise. And what if you don't make it? You're like, oh, you know, I tried to make it the eighth week. I finished in the tenth week. Guess what? The tortoise isn't even behind you by a mile. So if you could somehow double up, and I've had people say, like, Dan, your eighth week idea is so great. I finished in like eight weeks. I had eight weeks to focus my other classes. Those classes are ramping up in their papers and their projects and all their other things. I was idle most of the early couple weeks. I cranked out self-paced and finished it. No other course lets you do that except for a self-paced course, which is why this works so well. So do that. Double time yourself, finish it in eight weeks. Also, come in if you get stuck. The worst thing that people do is they work alone, and if they get stuck, they don't come in. The moment you get stuck, come on in. Our tutors are ready to grade your quizzes and, tutor, and, and your programming assignments, and to help you, just all to sit week, down. Too, like, all week. All week, and don't, the other thing is, is our first year with this new pace, we're, we're really pointing out, if everybody just shows up at the last minute on Friday, it isn't gonna work. We've got and 300 we students, 16 away. tutors. I'll say it again. Yeah. 300 students, 16 tutors. So plan to come in. And not all 16 work at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so don't, don't, if, if I know. Maybe five at the same time. To have the end of the week is a deadline. You want to think all coming at 3 o'clock on Friday. Not going to happen, folks. Not going to happen. So, you know, that's one of the questions in the quiz. When, what days are you going to come in and start to think? Why is it not a good idea to only come in on Friday? So get started, read the handout, visit the center, start, start soon, buy the books, do all that, okay? We have a couple of modifications from people who have taken this two semesters ago. Pacing points, again, don't start until week three, that was new, as you see that, that continues with this formula. If you retake a quiz, you have to wait two days. It's a kind of a great, like a cooling off period, like getting a gun or something. Cooling off period between, you know, when you buy a gun, you have seven days waiting period, it's two days between the quiz, and you must complete programming assignments before quizzes. Meaning, we divide the whole work of the course into chunks, like a group. Group A, Group B, Group C. In Group A, there might be two, two programming assignments and one quiz. You need to finish all the programming assignments in that group before you do the quiz, before you can move on. You can still start working on the next programming assignment while you're trying to take that other quiz, but the reality is no quiz happens before you finish all the programming assignments for that group, if that makes sense. Okay, and in conclusion, welcome to self paced on everybody, and... Can you carry the torch of great programming? And I believe you can. Yay! Thank you very much, folks. <laughs>